What's up guys, this is Baba and this is the second part of the How to Fight Porn video. Um, so if you guys have been following the last video, I talked about kind of the mindset that you need to be in before you get into this fight. Like when you are dealing with it and when you are struggling with it, what type of things that you need to like uh, have in your mind when you are dealing with it and what type of things that you need to uh, keep in your heart uh, so that hey when i start setting up these different uh barriers when i start doing all these practical things i know the reason why i'm doing it and i'm not just doing it just to do now one thing i want to do is i want to be able to put this little disclaimer out there i wrote it out so i can make sure that i wrote it right and i had exactly what i wanted to say but um these things are fairly general because I know different things work for different people. But as you start your fight, you can start working on, on some of the details. So uh, this is a general thing. This is not saying that this is exactly what needs to be done. I'm not gonna sit here and get to these exact, like uh, these minute details because only you and God can really know the minute details. And as you're um, seeking God and figuring out, um, you're gonna figure out more details and more things that work and more things that don't. But these are general things that um, will help, I, I guarantee will help and they will uh, help you in your, in, your, um, in your struggle. Now the first one, this might sound kind of obvious, but I feel like I need to put this out there because there are gonna be people in different sides of the spectrum, different things that they're dealing with. Um, first off, you need to have a relationship with God. I, I do not truly believe that I could have found, um, I could have found the deliverance I needed. I could have found the real strength I needed without God in my life. And I know there are people out there that have um, porn addiction that are actually able to get out of it um, without God, but I, I just, I just don't recommend that. Like why try to do something without the full power of God in you? So if you have not accepted Jesus into your heart and you want and you think that this is something that you're struggling with, and it's something that's going on, I believe that you should do that first. Um, if you have any questions about that, um, I would love to be able to get to that in like a, a later video or if you want to message me or whatever, that is fully fine. Um, but I just think that that's like the main thing. Now, I'm not saying that if you're dealing with this, that that means that, oh, you don't have a relationship with God. No, I believe that there are a lot of people that are truly saved, but are just struggling with something. Being saved and struggling with something aren't like on two different spectrums. Like a lot, you are going to always be struggling with something as a Christian. I was a Christian and I was struggling with this. I knew that God had a calling in my life. I knew that God had wanted me to be a minister, but I was still struggling with that sin. So if you are struggling right now, don't think that's what I'm saying by this have a relationship. But what I am saying is that I believe that there are some people that are saved and they're just saved because they don't like, they don't try to actually have like a deeper relationship with God, a deeper connection to God. And I believe that you need to have that deep connection with God in order for you to fight this. See, um, God says that his word is the, is the sword. Like it's a double, -edged, sharper than any double edged sword. So like, this means that like, we're trying to fight a battle without all of our weapons. And if you are not praying, if you're not reading the Bible, it's going to be easier for the devil to try and get you because it's easier for an enemy to try and come and approach you when you don't have all the weapons that you need. So have all the weapons that you need. I'm not saying that that's going to completely be like, oh, now that I pray and read the Bible, that I'm not going to have any more struggles. That's not what it means. But you need to be able to have all that you can to be able to fight this off rather than just trying to just do it on your own strength and do it on your own willpower because you will always fail and you will always struggle and you will always fall into sin if you try to do it on your own willpower and your own strength the second thing is get an accountability partner or get a few accountability partners now this is key because a lot of the times when we're struggling with this sin, I kind of talked about it in the last video, we believe that we're alone. We believe that there's nothing, there's nobody that can understand us and everyone's just gonna judge us and look at us crazy when we talk about it. But here's the thing, 
The devil uses those situations in order to keep us away from God's calling. Because, see, God has called us into community for a reason. This is why the whole idea of church, we don't go to church just to be able to hang out with people. We go to church because these are the people that are going to be with us on the front lines, and we need to be able to fight with them. So if you have a mature believer that you that um, is with you, that you trust, and that you know won't like look at you crazy, and you know that they're going to help you in this, those are the people that you need to lean to. Now, that doesn't mean that this person needs to be older than you, per se. And it really doesn't mean that this person, like, has to, um, like, has to be, like, a, a prominent figure. Like, they have to be a pastor or something. They don't have to be that. But it just means that they have to be mature, meaning that, like, this has got to be somebody that's going to actually help you move forward rather than just someone that's going to be, like, along with you, um, and like struggling with you in the sense that like they're not even trying they're just like hey well I'm dealing with this too but they're not really working at it like these gotta be someone that kind of has like a little bit of it behind them or just someone that is not struggling with it as much just someone that's mature in their face someone that's not gonna sit there and like just like uh, leave at the first sight of something going wrong or that's gonna like only be halfway committed to you. You need to have somebody that's actually gonna care and actually gonna be close to you in that um, regard. Now, I do want to make a few clarifications on this and a few stipulations. This person has got to be somebody who is mature. Okay, like I kind of said that before, but I really want to staple that down that they got to be someone that's mature. Like before I had actually been able to uh, completely get the deliverance that I needed for, uh, from this, I was sitting here, I was uh, telling some people that they're not really trying. They're just like kind of, because it was easier to tell them because like I knew that they knew me and I knew that, uh, oh, well, they're dealing with it. But if you're, if they're dealing with it, but they're not actually trying to help the problem, they're not actually trying to work against the, uh, that situation, then that's not going to help you. It's just going to make you, it's just going to make you basically a pity party between you and the other person. And y'all are going to basically be fighting to see like, oh, well, at least I did better than him. That's not how God wants it to be. And that's not how biblical accountability looks like. Biblical accountability is somebody that's trying to challenge you and bring you deeper. But then the second thing that is really important with this is that this person has got to be of the same gender. Like, I'm sorry, dudes. Like, you cannot go up to a girl and try to get the girl to be able to help you and be accountable with you in this uh, regard. Because there's a few things that may happen. Um, one of you guys could catch feelings for each other because you guys could be like, oh, well, um, we're, we're uh, pouring our heart out and we're getting so close to each other so then you sit there and start catching feelings for each other and then sometimes that vulnerability can be used to be able to uh, bring you further into sin and it's the same with women okay now with women it's even like I'll say it's even a little bit more um, it's a little bit more like uh, dangerous so if a woman like says that, hey, I'm going to have this man to be my accountability partner, the problem that you can run into there is a lot of men will use that, uh, will use your weakness in order to kind of give them a leg up. Um, and even if you think that this person is really saved, this person is really close to God, there is always going to be an issue with that and there's always going to be an issue with them wanting to be like, oh, well, hey, if she's got a problem with porn, then maybe I can be, like, their helper, you know? And they'll try and, like, uh, uh, like weasel their way into it to try and, uh, like, use your weaknesses to help them. And we don't, you don't want that. Like, you don't want any of those problems to be able to happen. And you don't want, like, uh, you to have, like, a big old mess of, like, hey, well, this, I was trying to be accountable on this. And then this person brings you into, further into sin. You don't want any of that. Next thing is, you have to know what are times that you struggle. Now, there's this acronym that is all, I've always used to help me and that people have told me about, and it's really helpful to me when you're, it's HALT, that's the acronym. 
it's hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. What Those four things, those four times are times where you are most vulnerable to sin in general. Um, it's not, this is not just specific to porn, this is like to anything. When you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, you can cause yourself to get into oh, bad habits. And these are where bad habits really form. Um, for everyone, it's different. For everyone, there are some that are more like prominent. Um, when I'm hungry and I'm angry, those are less times. Those are not as much times for me that I'm uh, prone to sin. But yeah, when I'm lonely, when I'm tired, those are times that I definitely get into sin because if I'm really tired, then uh, it affects your it affects your decision making skills. And so you think that oh well, I should do this or whatever, and it's not a good decision to make. And it'll always lead you further and further into stuff. And then when you're lonely, sometimes you have that struggle where you're, uh, where because you're lonely, you feel like, oh, well, hey, if I, this will make me feel less lonely. And it, and it won't. And it never does. Um, and, you know, like I said, with hungry and angry, I'm not sure where you're at. But those could be things that are, are affecting you too. But for me, it's mostly lonely and tired. But the main thing is just no times that you are going to be struggling the most. And try to um, create procedures to be able to make that less common. Uh, for me, um, if I know I'm going to feel lonely, what I do is I purposely put myself around people. I purposely like, hey, oh, let's hang out with a friend, or hey, let's um, let's be closer to family and talk to my family. Like, I always have to do that because that's the only way that I can be able to uh, kind of deal with that. And then tired, of course, I get to sleep. You know, I try to get to sleep at better times now than I used to, and try to get more sleep so that hey, I'm not tired and I don't choose to do dumb stuff um, that that will hurt me um, because I'm tired. The next thing is get rid of temptation. Now, this might sound like another obvious thing, but I think it's important to say because like I said in the last video, a lot of us will say, hey, we're doing everything we can to be able to get rid of our problem, but we're not. You know, if we are still having a problem, we're obviously not doing everything because um, the scripture says that, um, you will never be tempted past what you can bear and that there's always going to be a way out. That does not mean that, oh, you can deal with everything on your own and that you don't need God. That's not what it means. What it means in context is that when you are tempted to do sinful things, God will always provide a way out. You, you, the devil is never, can never force you to do something. He can put something in front of you. He can tempt you with it, but he cannot uh, fully, uh, make it so you, that you have to do that. No. Um, so in regards to this, that means delete any downloaded photos that you may have, any downloaded videos that you have. If you have subscriptions to any porn sites or anything like that, you need to get rid of those too. Um, and honestly, this is another one that a lot of people don't like, and I didn't like too much either when uh, God told me this, but you might have to unfollow some people. Like, there are some people on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, there are people that you can be able, that you have friended or that you have followed, and then you are only uh, following them because you know that, well, every once in a while they post a photo like this, I really like those types of photos, or, um, oh, every once in a while they post a video like this, or they, but you know the things that are, that are, are leading you to sin and sometimes it's not even people trying to do things that make you sin but you if you know that a per certain person or whatever is causing you to be uh, brought in that mind state then you need to unfollow them it doesn't mean that you need to like completely like um, act like they're not your friend or not a uh, witness to them but you know God is not gonna put you don't put yourself in situations that God would not want you in don't put yourself in situations that are going to cause you to sin. Um, for me, that was why I had to get rid of Snapchat. I had to get rid of Snapchat because I was like, every time that you know I'm on Snapchat, I'm seeing all these people living their lives. Um, it was um, le it was leading me to sin. And you know, Snapchat by itself is not a sinful thing, 
but that was a temptation for me so I had to get rid of snapchat um, so whatever it may be that you're dealing with just notice that you got to get rid of those temptations and you've got to get rid of that source that can be able to get you to it which might mean that you might have to block some websites too you might have to put safe search on all of your devices you might have to be able to um, use a different browser like there are some safe browsers where things won't pop up you know whatever you have to do you have to get rid of that temptation because like I said in the first video we have to do whatever it takes to get rid of sin in our lives and sometimes we're not gonna want to do the things that we that we need to do but God knows what we need in our lives and God knows that we need something better and God loves us enough to say hey I'm gonna provide a way out so that you can choose the right thing rather than the wrong thing the last thing I want to say is the last thing that you uh, need to do and the last practical step that you take towards freedom is you have to start trying to use your devices in public places. If you know that um, you watch porn on your computer, a lot of the times you're not going to sit there and watch porn on your computer if you're out where everyone else is in the house. Like, wherever the main room is in your house, wherever there's most uh, 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 public room in your house, try and go there when you're using your devices. Uh, don't try and use your phone, your tablet, your computer, whatever it is that you watch porn on. Don't try to use that in places where it's easy for you to do that. It's easy for you to lock yourself in your room and uh, get into that stuff. But if you move yourself out to a more public area, it's harder for you to be able to be to be able to get into that stuff. So just try to use um, your devices in public places. My advice to you is if uh, you live alone um, and that's one of the things that's going on in your life, um, get get to uh, find a coffee shop that you can get into that you can be able to work at, or um, go to a library or. Honestly, too, there are a lot of um, software out there. I'm pretty sure Covenant Eyes, uh, that software, I, I don't think that's a free software, but it is a software that like you can get on your phone, you can get on your uh, laptop. I think you can get on your phone too. And, I'm, and if I'm right, you should be able to like uh, have it so like people can be able to see your screen. Uh, so like if you like have a person that you hold that uh, is your accountability partner like have them be able to uh, see your screen and be able to see what's going on and be able to see your history um, in your uh, laptop and there are different things triple uh, X Church actually has uh, software out too that can be able to help with that uh, different things to be able to help you because like I said it's whatever it takes and if it takes like you literally having someone see your um, uh, your search history and see what you're looking at, then you've got to be willing to do that if you really want to get rid of this. Hey, thank you guys for watching this. Thank you guys for um, being able to see um, what like how to actually fix the problem, like how to actually fight porn, not just some statistics that tell you how bad porn is or me showing you some study. I don't need to convince you that porn is bad. I, I, I fully believe that there are some of you guys out there that are dealing with this that know that porn is bad but don't know how to fight it. So this is just uh, these last two videos, that's what they've been to um, do because um, I've been thinking about my life and I wish I had this. I wish I had more people that were speaking into my life about that. So like I said, I hope that this is helpful to you. I hope that you can be able to use these things to be able to find your way to freedom. And I hope that you can be able to find people in your life. And I pray that you can find people in your life that will um, that will help you in this journey and that will be able to actually speak life into you and um, to uh, help you further in your journey. So thank you guys for watching. Um, if you guys want to see more videos and more content that I have coming out, uh, subscribe. Um, if you guys have anything that you guys want to say, any encouraging words, any comments or anything, just um, comment below. But like I said, stay encouraging, stay happy, and do the things that you know God wants you to do.